Hello everyone. So today we are doing my TYC workshop and it's going to be about introduction to storytelling. Okay, so uh, um, I'm not going to get into this because this is just a recording, but basically we would do an icebreaker. Um, something to know is what we already know about storytelling, maybe starting to get into the mindset of what storytelling is and what we're going to be doing moving forward. And so about me, this is me. I am a junior at James Logan High School. On the side, I am the secretary of my high school's UIC club chapter and I'm also the junior class vice president for my class, which is the class of 2022. And on the and a little background about me is that I love writing and I always keep a journal around me. And I also created a few few books in the past, nothing too seriously. It's not like it was published, but I kind of did it for fun and I was able to hand it out to somebody um, at my local elementary school. So I thought that was pretty cool. And yeah, that's basically me. And a brief overview. So for this course, um, students will learn how to create their own story plot line, how to transform it into to a publishable piece, think creatively, and discover their own voice and imagination. So some contents of this workshop is introduction to storytelling, which is to the first day, um, brainstorm your own story ideas, writing a story plot, illustrations and graphics, design book covers, and lastly, production and future possibilities with your story. So some goals and prerequisites of this workshop, it's pretty simple. So for the goals, our goals are to think and work creatively, um, create your own story that is uniquely your own, encourage more creative activities and outlets for students to share their voice and experiences, and most importantly, to have fun. <laughs> So some prerequisites, also pretty simple. Um, basically just have paper and or a web document so that you can access your story, internet access, which I am assuming that you have one if you are accessing this video, um, some art supplies and or access to Google Apps, which again, I assume that you pretty, pretty much have them um, if you can access this video. So, um, so lesson one is introduction to storytelling. So we're going to talk about the basics of storytelling. So basically what storytelling is, is the process of using fact and narrative to communicate something to your audience. Um, some different forms of storytelling, um, poetry, screenwriting and script writing, songwriting, graphic novels and comic books, and more. Basically storytelling can really be anything that you can think of. It's basically what art is. Um, so the possibilities are definitely endless and yeah. So um, why is storytelling important? So before I share my answer, maybe think about what you think storytelling is important, why it's important to you specifically or personally. Um, so yeah, I would just advise to maybe think about it a little bit. Um, so for me, I think storytelling is important because it's the basis of creating entertainment, media forms, and our cultures. Storytelling also leads to people voicing their experiences and thoughts, and that's very, very important for our own representation in society. Storytelling is also a universal way to share our ideas, and it brings people together. Um, so yeah, basically storytelling I feel like it's very encompassing of different activities, different forums. It's very universal. So that's why I personally love storytelling. And hopefully you can find your own reason to love storytelling too. We all have our reasons. And so basically we are going to be doing a quick brainstorm activity. Um, so basically you could do this on your own, on your own time as you're watching this video. Um, so we are just going to think and write down your own answers to help inspire you throughout this course. So I advise maybe taking a Google document, if you have them, pull up a Word doc on your computer, phone, tablet, or if you have like a paper nearby, you can grab that. And basically these are just some brainstorming um, questions that you can think about. And it's basically just gonna help inspire you throughout the course and to help guide you to see like where you want your story to like be about and 
why you're doing it in the first place. So some questions are, what is your favorite book or story? Um, what made it your favorite? Maybe it's the characters, the plot, the illustrations. Um, another question, what inspires you? This can really help engage your mind and see what influences you want to incorporate into your story. So people, places, past experiences. And lastly, like the last question we did on the previous slide, why do you think storytelling is valuable? So basically, we are going to share our own personal favorites on this board. Um, we aren't together, like, um, this is basically a pre-recorded um, film, but basically we would have um, just put some of our favorite stories on this Padlet. And some examples, um, one of my favorite books is The Land of Stories. And basically what this exercise does, it helps like inspire you from getting other people's opinions and what maybe their favorite stories and influences are. So if you're watching this, like as this is pre-recorded, um, uh, if, and we're not allowed, or not, we're not able to do this Padlet together as a group, um, I would advise maybe asking your parents, your guardians, maybe your siblings, maybe your friends, um, other people, maybe ask them like what their favorite stories are, because I think it's very helpful to have that some sort of collaboration and think about what other people might be into. And it can also maybe inspire your story that you are going to write throughout this course. So I think that's very helpful. Um, Moving forward, so basically this ends day one of lesson one, and basically what we did was learn about what storytelling is and what it can consist of. We created an inspiration page, and um, yeah, in our next session, we are going to start brainstorming story ideas so that we can actually create our own story. So with that, we are just going to jump into day two, and you can always go back and pause and go at your own pace. Um, sorry if I'm speaking too fast. So lesson two is brainstorming ideas for your story. Um, so this is our icebreaker, which we'll skip because we're not in person um, or together or online. Um, so basically today we will be starting the first step in creating our own stories. Um, due to the short time we have together, we will be fo focusing on a short story, short story format. Um, we are, this is pre-recorded though, so um, if you want, you can create a longer story format or develop it further, but basically this um, course is basically tailored to just a short story type of book or story. Um, so we're just going to be doing brainstorming activities and finding ways to inspire, find your inspiration and creativity. And here is a quote that I found online, which is created Creativity is nothing but a mind set free, and maybe you can have that in consideration while we move forward. So, basically, every story follows this basic story art format. You may have seen this before, maybe in school. Um, I know I did a lot of these growing up in school. So, it's a story arc. You start with exposition, you have a problem, you have a rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. And we'll come back to this, but maybe if you want to keep that in mind, what a story arc is and how stories kind of developed, um, you can take a screenshot of this, you can pause it, um, copy it down, but we'll come back to it. Um, so what is included in a story? So some pretty general things that you also probably had thought of yourself. Um, you have characters, setting, plots, conflict slash problem, resolution to the problem, actions, dialogue, um, basically what you would think of in a story. Pretty simple, right? Um, um, okay. And then, so the first activity we are going to be doing are called mind maps. So you may have done this at school too, but basically um, you're gonna have a topic, a general topic. I chose friends. As it, you can choose anything, some topic ideas I wrote down and listed um, that can help you get you going. Um, family, friends, schools, maybe if you took vacations or took trips, um, holidays, if you celebrate them, it's okay if you don't. Um, sports activities, maybe that you're involved in. 
um, maybe you think about summer or like um, the seasons, like winter, fall, um, hangouts with friends, which is what I kind of chose, and really anything that you can think of. And so basically what mind maps do is they help you think of um, different topics that you might not already have thought of. And you basically take a general topic and then you start branching out and see smaller details. And that can really help you figure out what your inspiration comes from and what you kind of want to write your story about. It just kind of helps get the ideas going. And I do have a digital handout. Um, I don't know if I can link it with this video. But basically, it looks like that, my example. You could do it on your own, um, like your own version of it. It's pretty simple. And yeah, you can always pause this video, take the time to do it, um, or, or yeah. <laughs> and then um, the second activity that we would have done would be timelines. I also have a digital handout of this, which is basically the same as my example up there. Um, but you can create your own. It's pretty simple also. You just draw like a line or however you want to do it and then you just add events chronologically. And basically timelines can help brainstorm ideas in chronological order and through events you can think in a larger sense. Um, um, in a larger set lens, example, like your whole life or a smaller lens, maybe like a specific event, that's all up to you. So basically, um, a little detail about it. Um, I feel like it's pretty straightforward, but for my example, I chose my high school life and I kind of, it's kind of broad, but it's not too broad um, and it's not too specific either. So I feel like it gave me a good middle about the middle grounds for that. But again, you can do whatever you like. It's basically just Again, brainstorming ideas, trying to get ideas out there. Oops. Okay, and then the third activity is basically a freestyle. So um, I would advise grabbing a piece of paper or a digital document, um, literally anything that you have around, and you can write as or draw as many ideas you could possibly think of. Um, basically what this does is it kind of like such, again, setting your mind free, letting your ideas come out and be present and again the more you write the more ideas are likely to come up and um pretty much just write whatever comes to mind um i feel like inspiration comes from different areas and sometimes it's very unexpected so i feel like this freestyle activity is a good way to brainstorm those ideas out and it can lead to really great ideas you never know so that's the freestyle activity. And again, you can always pause the video or pause the video, stop the video, or do this afterwards. Um, this is just a pre recording. So, and so now that we have some ideas in mind, so we're going to think about if we want to write our piece fictional or nonfiction. So, basically, fiction can be inspired by true events, but a majority of the story is made up and imagined while nonfiction consists of a true account of real life events and experiences. And so you could choose whether fiction or nonfiction, up to you. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe like a mix of both could be cool too. It's again, up to you. And remember that we are aiming for a short story is similar to a children's picture book in length. Um, so if you can imagine like a picture book um, that you would read as a child or maybe your siblings have, picture books, um, pretty much the same length and yeah. And so the next session, we will be begin drafting our stories. And so while we move forward, some questions to keep in mind are who, what, when, where, why, and how. This will help you think about developing your story into an actual plot. And yeah, and also remember that every story needs an initial problem to be solved throughout the plot. You can't really have a story without a conflict. Again, going back to the story arc thing. Um, so yeah, that's basically what we did today. Um, we talked about story comp story components, brainstorming activities, fiction versus nonfiction. And the next session, we will start writing our story plot. So with that, we are going to lesson three. Um, so we're just going to skip the icebreaker again. And, um, so today we're going to start writing our story and using outlines and guides. So 
We're thinking about outlines of stories, drafting stories, and components when writing. So what we're going to be doing is to narrow down our story ideas. So we want to look back at our previous brainstorming handouts if needed. Um, remember that we did like the mind maps, the timelines, freestyle, and then we're going to be choosing nonfiction or fiction. Again, nonfiction is real life, fiction is more imaginary. Um, initial conflict to be resolved throughout the story. Also, again, going back to the story arc thing and having a vision of where you want all of it to go. So again, I told you we were going to go back to our story arc. So this is it, this is our story arc. Um, yeah, so basically it's going to have a beginning, middle and end, and we're just going to kind of play around with that and see how we want to develop our story. And so um, here are some worksheets. Um, again, I don't know how to link them to this, but again, you could create them on your own on digitally paper. It's pretty simple. Um, it's a pretty simple outline. You can pause the video. Um, so over here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but there are oh, here, this is a story arc thing. Um, you have the exposition, which basically talks about your character, setting, introduction to the problem. You have your rising um, action and climax, falling action, and then the resolution. The resolution is the solution to the conflict and the initial ending. And then on here to the right, you have a beginning, middle, and end format. Um, these are basically just outlines to kind of plot your story and like kind of outline it. Again, um, you don't have to use these, you can use your own. Um, but yeah, um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And we're just going to move on. Again, you can pause it whenever you like. So hopefully um, after you kind of created your outline and your basis of it, um, and it's okay if you haven't finished it, it's totally fine. This is kind of pre-recorded, so you definitely can go at your own pace. Sorry again if I'm speaking too fast, but now we will actually draft out what our text is going to say throughout the whole story. So I suggest having designated sections for each page of the story, then writing your text onto the page where you want it to be. So for example, you can use different um, outlets, I guess, um, different apps like Google Slides, Google Docs, paper, um, to section off pages. I find it very useful to actually have the pages laid out um, first and then adding things into it. I feel like it's very simple that way and it's more organized. Um, I think I have, okay, yeah, I have examples of different ways you could do it. So here are different ways. Um, my personal recommendation is Google Slides. Again, if you're accessing this video, then um, chances are that you can have access to Google Slides. All you have to do is have a Google, Google account. It's pretty simple and it's free. So <laughs> Google Slides, here is an example of it. You can have your example title and then you just section off pages and as you go, and it's pretty easy to organize it that way. Um, that's my preferred way, but again, you don't have to really use it. Um, and then you can also use Google Docs, which is basically you have actual paper cutoffs. Um, you can have your title page, page, page two, Google Docs here. Um, yeah, it's again, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, here are other um, resources that you can use. Um, the ones that are italicized with the little star are my personal recommendations. So you can have a physical copy of the paper. Um, Google Docs and Google Slides, and you could also have different word processors. Um, maybe if you have pages um, on, if you have like a MacBook, for example, um, Canva, which is an app, Adobe Spark, which is also another app. These are Canva and Adobe Spark, I'm pretty sure are free to use. Um, so you can log in and sign up through there. They're free, um, free additional resource, but just remember to have your parents like, go through it first, just in case. Parent or parents approval first as you sign up or if you decide to sign up. To sign up. And so moving on, um, so maybe things to consider when writing, um, just to keep in the back of your mind when you're actually writing your story plot. Think about dialogue. Um, dialogue is what characters would say, um, maybe even think. 
um, descriptions, adjectives, um, thinking about the five senses, five senses, you know, touch, smell, hear, um, see, taste, I'm pretty sure are the five senses, um, who, what, when, where, why, and how, um, the setting, the characters, the initial conflict, remember, remembering that you need a conflict to create your story, if it is it first person, second person, or third person, um, first person, um, thinking about if it's um, from your point of view, second person, if it's from the other person's point of view, third person, if it's just like a, narr a narrator's point of view. Um, yeah, I didn't really go into the first person, second person, or third person um, so much into this particular workshop, but um, you can always search it up and like on Google if you want more specifics about it. Um, but yeah. Um, so basically the recap of this lesson of writing a story plot, we talked about story arcs and outlines, providing handouts and resources, organize, organizing text, drafting out the plot. And so the next session, which is my favorite session, is the illustrations and graphics. So moving on, and lesson number four is the illustrations and graphics. Um, my favorite session. Um, so quick icebreaker, we don't have to get into this. Again, this is pre-recorded, but I do hope all of you are feeling great today, whenever you're watching or listening to this video. So, um, so what we would do is illustrations can help tell a story through visuals. So I created this Padlet, which we aren't able to really, like, incorporate into this because it's pre-recorded but basically we would, we would have brainstorm our favorite um stories that kind of resonate with us visually so favorite live action movie favorite animated movie favorite live action tv show so on and so so forth um because we can't do the padlet together i would advise you also again to maybe talk to your peers, maybe the people around you, maybe ask what their visual stories are, think about maybe what your favorite visual stories are, and this can help you kind of brainstorm what you want your story to kind of look like visually, graphically. Um, so some examples, um, my favorite live action movie would probably be, uh, actually, don't know, but my favorite animated movie, I liked Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I really liked how it was visually. I thought it was really cool how they incorporate, incorporated incorporated different elements and kind of styles of arts. And um, also another favorite movie, animated movie is um, Soul, the Pixar movie Soul. I also liked how they incorporated different elements and it was very uh, diverse kind of art history to it um I thought it was really cool so maybe think about maybe what your favorites are it can definitely help you um kind of influence the way you want your story to be visualized and yeah so this seems like a lot but it's not that much um I'll just kind of dive into this um so these are different resources to do illustrations so here are different apps and stuff. So here it's Bitmoji. Um, again, I would, if you are maybe younger, I would advise you to um, kind of check in with a parent before you sign up. And then you have Google features here. Um, if you decide to do like a Google Slides, Google Document, these are like things that you can access. Um, it's pretty cool. You could have shapes, diagrams, board arts, lines, um, doing things like that. Um, Google Jamboard is also another feature from Google. It's like another app extension. Um, you can add sticky notes, text boxes. You can use pens that they provide to you on this slide here. You can create shapes, um, add pictures. That's me. Hey. Um, Google Drawings um, is all, Google Drawing is also another app. It's very similar to Google Jamboard, but it's kind of formatted differently. Again, you could have shapes. I think they have more shapes to choose from for Google Drawing, um, but it's pretty much the same thing. It's you can create lines, um, text boxes, 
um, pens on these apps. And then here, I also talked about this before, it's the Adobe Spark app and the Canva free app. Um, both of these are free, I believe. Um, they do have a premium subscription, but you can pretty much do a lot of things through their free, free accessible um, trial, I guess. It's pretty much, yeah, I use it all the time. It's, it's really great. Um, you can use different things like you can do custom dimensions with it. You can create logos, posters. They have a bunch of different elements that you can put onto them visually. Um, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, I would look into these apps if you can and if you are able. They're very useful and a good way to kind of branch out and try to think of different out-of-the-box things. They have a lot more options, but if you are very comfortable with Google and their apps, I, they have great stuff too. But you could also create your own illustrations by hand, which I also prefer doing. You can use paints, um, markers, pens, different things like that. Um, yeah, and it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So we're just going to move on. Um, so things that you could also consider doing are having speech bubbles. Maybe if your characters are talking, you could have speech bubbles to the side near them. Thought bubbles, maybe put what they're maybe thinking about. Um, combining different resources and media forms. Um, what I liked to do when I was creating a book before, I kind of combined it, um, Google Slides, um, Bitmoji, and I also did stuff by hand, like trying to combine those different forms of media. I think it's pretty cool to kind of have that diverse, diverse area of things. Um, but yeah, and you can also think about if you want a picture for every page, not every page has to have a picture. It's definitely up to you. Um, maybe something to think about. And maybe you'll also think about how the picture or illustration correlates with the text and plot of your story. So those are maybe some things to think about while you're doing your illustrations and graphics. And so with that being said, a recap of what we did in this lesson is we did a work day for our stories. Um, we did a favorite visual stories padlet, which is basically just thinking about what our favorite stories are. Um, visual stories, I mean. And we talked about different resources for creating graphics. And again, these aren't what you're limited to. There's probably a dozen other apps that you can use, a do dozen other resources you can also use. So um, you're, you don't really have any limitations to it. It's definitely up to you and what you have accessible and what you can think of. Um, but yeah. And so our next session, we are going to be working on designing our book covers. Um, and yeah, so lesson five, designing your book covers. This is kind of just piecing everything together. And so we're just gonna skip the icebreaker. Um, so today we want to be focusing on book covers and non-content related parts of the story. So basically when you think of book covers, you should probably think of title page, back cover page, dedication page, and the about me page, which I think is maybe is really fun because you get to talk about yourself. Um, so the front cover. So um, what the front cover pretty much consists of is having a title on the front. Maybe think about what your title of your story wants to be um, and then putting the author's name, which would be your name. Um, you can design this however you want, of course. Um, you can use the resources mentioned in the previous session with the illustrations and graphic designs. Um, from last lesson, but you could also do whatever you want, whatever comes to mind. Again, you're not restricted here. Um, and then, so that's the front cover, and so the back cover. So the back cover, this usually gives, like, the reader a brief summary of what the story is about, and if you can think of, like, maybe books that you have personally read, um, I feel like when you get a book, you always look at the back cover, look at the summary, so that's basically what the back cover is for. And because we are doing this short story, try to condense the summary into maybe less than five sentences. Um, I don't think it should be super long, but it's again up to you, whatever you want your story to kind of be like. And then, so a question 
to make me think about in the back of your mind while you do the back cover and your summary is if you if you were to describe what your story is about in a nutshell what would you say and so if you have this question in mind it kind of would help direct you into maybe thinking about how you were supposed to condense this story idea of yours into a summary and what you can put on your back cover so yeah that's basically the back cover and then the title page so the title page is different from the front cover it's the page before the dedication page and an initial and it's basically just the restating of the title um if you can think about a book you have like a hardcover book and then when you open up the page you have like a basic page but it just has the title thing on it and that's basically what the title page is I'm sorry if I'm not explaining it correctly, but if you can open up a book that you have maybe lying around, you can see that there's a front cover, and then when you open it, there's also a page just that just has the title on it. And so this mentions the title, of course, in your author's and the author's name, which again is you. Um, and this is usually designed very more simply, and it doesn't have like so much design on it. It's basically literally just a title page. Um, but again, you can always design it, customize it however you want. Um, this is your book. This is what you want to create. Um, so the sky's the limit. And so the dedication page. This is also one of my favorite parts of the book. Um, most stories and books have a dedication page. So this is a page before the initial story. So if you can think about the title page, you after you flip the title page, you have a dedication page. And what you can say for the ded dedication page, you can put like for blank name of person or dedicated to, I would like to dedicate this story to. Those are just some sentence starters um, or page starters to get you going, but you can say whatever you want on it. And I think it's a really great way to honor or com commemorate people who would you like to recognize. Um, I think it's just a great way to try to kind of making the story more personal and this can also be a way to maybe if you want to create a story to gift to another person, this would be a good place to say your dedication to or to say your appreciation. Um, so yeah, I really like the dedication page just because it makes it a lot more personal. Uh, so yeah, that's the dedication page. And then the about the author page. So again, this was also my favorite thing because you could talk about yourself basically and it's helps the readers kind of get to know you better so it's usually at the end of the story um but again up to you you can do whatever you want you can put it if you want to do like book flaps you can put it on there but it's usually at the end of the story so it's a page where you talk about you like i said um you can talk about previous books that you made um maybe your experience in writing or what you like to do Maybe if you are a student, maybe your grade, um, maybe your age too, if you're you know, younger, um, your interest, what you're into, maybe your family like. Um, you can talk about anything that you want to. Um, oh, sorry about that. Um, you can also include a picture of yourself onto your about the author page. Um, this is basically, again, a t page where you talk about yourself. You can do, you can it's basically um, kind of creating your own narrative to who you are. So I think that's really cool. And yeah, so this is basically outline of everything. You can take a screenshot, you could write it down, um, pause the video maybe. Um, so you have your front cover, title page, dedication page, about me page, and back cover. Um, this is also the order that it usually is um, traditionally. Um, you have your front cover first, your title page, your dedication page, and in the middle of this would be your story. And then after your initial story, you have your about me page and then your back cover. So this is also chronologically correct too, if you want to think about that. And so basically for lesson five, designing book covers, we talked about components of book covers and non-content related parts to the story examples of book covers and then the next session which is also my favorite part too i feel like i always say it's my favorite part but i just love storytelling um production and future possibilities and i think that's really cool so we are going to 
get to our last lesson of t of this workshop. Sorry, uh, it's about production and future possibilities. Um, so we're gonna skip the quick icebreaker, but maybe something to think about also is this last question is what will you take away from our workshop? So maybe think about, you know, after this workshop ends, maybe what do I wanna take away from it? Um, have a take, um, but yeah, I'm just gonna, but we're just basically gonna skip this. So, <laughs> Um, for lesson six, um, we're going to think about publishing and things that you can do in the future. So, if you're thinking about publishing in the future, so things that you may want to take note of and think about is the cost, um, royalties, and if you don't know what royalties are, ro royalties is basically what you would earn from the sales that you have or that you make from publishing. Um, if you want to do an ebook or a paperback, um, and what your target audience is. Where do you want these books to initially be distributed at? Maybe if there's a specific group that you would like this to go out to, maybe think about that too. And yeah, so for publishing, if you would like to, if you would like your story or future stories to be published, these are some great resources that I found online. Um, so you have Ingram, Spark, Wattpad, Barnes and Noble's Press, and some of these probably sound familiar to you. Um, Kindle Direct Publishing, which is part of the Amazon company. Barnes & Noble, you probably have some Barnes & Nobles around you or have, he or have heard of it. Um, Apple Books, which is part of the Apple company. Um, so yeah, these are different um, ways that you can publish different outlets. Um, if you're interested in publishing, maybe take a look at these different, um, different, what's it called? Apps, resources, um, they're all pretty, they're all pretty similar, but they do have their differences. So if you are serious about publishing, maybe have some resources or sorry, research about it. Um, see maybe what you're particularly interested in when it comes to publishing and trying to find the best resource um, for you and available to you. So these are just some resources. Um, and so here's an article that goes well into what each of the most popular publishing sites have to offer. And this is where I found the self-publishing companies that you saw on the last slide. I read this article, it's a great article. It's from a blog. Um, you can search this up on your web domain too. It also goes in depth about like the details of which of the self-publishing companies, um, maybe what their strong suits are. If you're interested in this, maybe this is the best one for you. So if you are like seriously interested in publishing, I would check out this article um, and maybe do your research about it because I think it's really interesting and really cool if you do publish. And so here's a link to a popular website. It's called Wattpad. Um, it is not mentioned in this article here, but I I personally think it's a good resource to um, add on to. Um, I would just like to add to it. It's very popular. A lot of my peers know about Wattpad, have contributed to Wattpad, read Wattpad. Um, I do advise if you are um, of a younger age to do consult with your parents before you sign up to any of these, um, get their parents' permission. Um, so yeah, Wattpad is just another way to kind of publish. It is more digitally, I believe. Um, yeah, there, it's a global community, so you can read different things, different cultures, and different forms of media. I think it's a great, great way. You could also read, read on Wattpad, write on Wattpad, like the other self-publishings. But yeah, I don't know particularly like all the details on each publishing thing, but these are just resources um, for you to have them if you wanna research further. Um, so other possibilities. So if you're interested in screenwriting and script writing, um, I would look into this website called screencraft.org. Um, they have a lot of great resources. I'm actually also personally signed up to them. Um, I don't really do much on there, like through my account but I do think it's a really cool way to kind of engage with like the screenwriting community, um, read different scripts from movies, TV shows. They also have a lot of 
like contest maybe that you can submit to it again if you are like a minor and younger of age do consult with your parents permission first though before you submit anything um but yeah screencraft is a great website they also have um they also link up different writing tools like specifically for scripts and script writing if you're interested in that maybe playwriting too um so here we have writer duet and I tried, I think I tried Writer Duet 2 personally. Um, there's a free sign up for both of them, so you can try it for free. I think for Writer Duet, if I'm not mistaken, the last time I checked, it's, it gives you like a free whole like script that you can write on, like all free, like you can use the resources. But then after you create like one script, you have to like pay like additional fees. So that's why I advise to get parents permission before you submit anything or sign up for anything. Um, but yeah, they are free to try. I think if you are interested in maybe like TV production, maybe you're very fascinated of how like production works and screenwriting. And maybe if you're, if you're always glued to the TV or if you're like very interested in like how they create them, I would definitely look into screenwriting and script writing. It's one of my personal favorites. Um, but yeah, so these are just some resources to do that. And more other possibilities. So if these are other narrative submissions, so this is called Submittable. I found this out through a magazine kind of platform on social media. They use Submittable to get creators um, input and um, kind of get creators like what's it called like um content yeah content so it's basically um you can sign in um or get a demo i haven't really looked into it much either but again parents permission but if you are interested in maybe submitting literary journals publishing books maybe contributing to websites blogs magazines um, different, a lot of different media. So this is um, just another resource that you can use if you want to publish your work to other, like maybe smaller platforms or smaller media forms. Um, I would advise you look at Submittable. I think it's a great resource too. Um, yeah. So um, again, with those resources in mind, definitely parents permission I'm um, I just want to stress that just because a lot of those resources um, have some sort of payment method too um, for the most part they're all free but I think they do have some fees if you really want to like, dive into it more but anyway so careers and storytelling so um, sorry so some careers and storytelling um, there are a lot of different platforms and ways to get involved into storytelling so you could become an author which I feel like is the most basic form that comes to mind you could be a poet um, journalist screenwriter director artist songwriter a lot of different possibilities these are just the more common ones um, but yeah if you're seriously interested in storytelling I definitely would look into these careers I think they're a great way and um, I personally have a lot of admiration towards storytellers because I feel like they definitely move our society forward and they definitely contribute to our cultures and our representation. So those are just some careers in storytelling um, if you want to have more future possibilities. And so any questions? Um, I don't know why I'm saying this because this is pre-recorded. But if you have any questions, um, you can always contact me. I don't know if I can put my email on it, but I hope you guys liked this workshop and thank you for participating in it. If you're watching this at your own time, I hope you're doing well. Um, thank you for participating and tuning into this. I'm sorry if it's pretty long and lengthy. Um, this is supposed to be like a week, like a six week or so workshop and I'm condensing this into a recording. But thank you for tuning into this. Um, these are some of my sources just for like legitimacy or um just to have it out there so if you want to look at those um but yeah thank you so much for tuning into my DYC workshop i hope you do consider storytelling in the future and yeah i hope you enjoyed and thank you again 
thank you for watching. For details, visit www.designyourcareers.org or send an email to info at designyourcareers.org. Subscribe to our channel, Design Your Careers, and hit the bell icon so you'll never miss a video.